वेलकम टू इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल एंड क्लिक ऑन दी बेल आइकन टू रिसीव द नोटिफिकेशन फॉर द अपकमिंग वीडियोज In today's lesson, we are going to discuss uh, function functions, function handles, and how to find the zero of a function with one variable. So now, what is meant by function functions? So in MATLAB, there are some functions which which uses another function as an input argument. So those functions are called function functions. For example, if I have this uh, function, let's suppose if I have this y is equal to x plus 2 e to the power minus x minus 3. If I have this function, if I have defined this as a function as my user defined function, and now I want to plot this function. So if I want to use this function, so I will use function handles. What is function handles? So we will know in a short while. So let's suppose I define a function for this. I make some user defined function for this. So let me define a function. let me copy this to define a function first we will write function then the output let's suppose the output here is y so y is equal to let's suppose the function name is f1 so f1 of x the input is x then i will write i will write this equation this equation is I will write y is equal to x plus two multiplied by exp minus one minus x minus three. So this is our function, right? So I have defined this as a user function, and now I will write end, and I will save it with f one name. So I will save it with f one, right? So now, if we want to plot this function, and if we want to use this uh, user-defined function as a function input to the plot function, so what we will do? Let's suppose I want to plot. Uh, let's suppose for this x uh, range of x from zero to six, I want to plot this function. I want to this uh, plot this function. and i want to use this f1 function as an input argument to plot function so what i will do i will create a function handle so what is a function handle so let's suppose i will write function 1 and then i will write at the rate to create a function uh, function handle you people will write at the rate and then the name of your function so the name of my function is f1 right and now i can i have referred this f1 function to another name that is function 1 so now if i want to plot this function so i will write plot for values of x right and then what i will do i will write function the handle that i have created so i will write function 1 this is function 1 is the handle that i have created and then i will input x as an input argument right So now, if I run this, you people see that we have plotted the user-defined function using plot function, and plot function is a function function. So it takes another function as an input. So if you people want to use a, a function which is a function function, so then you people need to create a function handle for your function. There is one another way to create a function handle. If you people do not want to have a separate m file for your function, if you people do not want to define this function in an m file and want to do not want to store it in your file directory, so then you people can create function handle directly as well. So how to create that? Let's suppose I write y is equal to at the rate. So at the rate x. x will be the variable whatever uh, whichever variable you people are using so if you people are using t as a variable so then you people will write at the rate t so at the rate x so it identifies it tells matlab that x will be in this function in this function the x is the variable so then i will write at the rate x and now i will write my complete function so i will write x plus 2 multiply by exp 
to the power minus x minus 3 right and now let me comment this so now what I will do now the I have created the function handle like this so now again this y is a function handle we have used at the rate this is the function and we have told uh, MATLAB that in this expression in this uh, expression x is a variable so treat x as a variable so then how to give it a, as an argument to plot function so I will write y of x so now here I haven't referred to that function 1 I have directly used this uh, function handle and now I am able to plot a function this function so now if I run this so we will get the same result so this is one another way to create a function handle and to use that function as an input argument to another function now let's suppose uh, we want to find zeros of a function with one variable let's suppose we have uh, the same we have this same way uh, function function of x and let's suppose we want to find the value of x for which this function value will be equal to zero we want to find the value of x for which y will be equal to zero so then there is one another function that is called f0 function so the syntax for f0 function the syntax for f0 function is that it is just like the roots function but the roots function used to give us the roots of a polynomial so if we have some other function if the, it's it's not a polynomial if we have another function of one variable keep in mind that f0 function will always work for a function with one variable so if we have any function with one variable and we want to find the zeros of that function are the roots of that function for which this y will be equal to zero so then what so then what we will do we will use f0 function so how to use this f0 function again keep in mind that this f0 function is a function function it takes another function as an input argument so then you people need to create the function handle for this so the syntax for this f0 function is that you people will extract zero you people can write instead of zero anything any variable name and then this is the value at that particular uh, x value and then it will extract that value and then we will write f0 and then we will use the function handle and then this x0 what is this x0 this x0 is your initial guess you will give some guess to f0 that check at this particular x nearer to this particular x that whether this y will be equal to 0 or not so before using f0 function I will always recommend you people to first plot a function so let's suppose if we want to find the zero of this function so we have already plotted this function so if I run this again so here we see that the value of the value of this function becomes zero at somewhere nearer to 3 we can see here so the value of this function will be zero at somewhere near to near to three or uh, in other words we can see that we can say that when x equals to three somewhere near to three so this function crosses the x axis so what f0 function does is that it tells us the value of x for which a given function of one variable will cross the x axis right so then and f0 function only tells us that value if a function only touches the x axis so it will not give us an un, uh, an answer and it will give us an undefined value it will say that the uh, zeros doesn't ex exist so if i want to find if if i want to find the zero of this function so now by plotting this i can see that somewhere near 3 there is a zero so i will give a guess of 3 initial guess my initial x0 guess will be 3 so how to use this uh, f0 function let me use this so I will write it here so 0 and value and then the function handle so we have already created the function handle so then I will write y y is a function handle for this function and now the initial guess my initial guess is 3 let's suppose right so now if I run this so here we see that it says that at x is equal to 2.8887 the value of the function is 0 
So as we have observed from this graph that somewhere near to 3, this function is crossing the x-axis. Or in other words, at somewhere near to 3, the function values becomes 0. So for which value this function becomes 0, so for x is equal to 2.887, this function, the y function uh, turns to 0 or it crosses that x uh, axis. So this is the use of f0 function. So f0 is a function function. Now if I change the range of x for this function, let's suppose I write that the x starts from minus 1 value. And now if I plot, plot this function, let me comment this first. So now if I plot this function for this x range, so let's see. So now we can see that at two instances, at two points, this function crosses the x-axis. So now if we use the f0 function to find this 0 or to find this 0, let's suppose if I want to find this in this first uh, point at which this y function tends to 0. So what I will do, my guess for the x0 will be somewhere 0, let's suppose. So let me try it. So if I use this uh, 0 function, so then if I use the guess as a 0, initial guess, if my initial guess is 0, so then what it will do, it will give me this minus 0 0.5831. So nearer to 0, nearer to 0, the value of x for which this y will turn to 0. So it says that according to your initial guess, nearer to 0, the value at x is equal to minus 0 0.5831, the function value is 0. And now if I change, uh, let me tell you that point as well on the graph. So let me edit this plot function. If I want to show that point, exactly this point on the graph, so what I will do, I will write the 0. I will write 0. And the function value for this 0 will be 0. So I can write value as well. So 0 and value and then I will write steric. So when I write 0, so 0 is the x value and value is the y value. So a 0 and value. So this is only one point. So if you want to show only one point on a graph paper, on a graph, so then we need to use this steric. So it's only a point. So for only 0, for minus 0 0.5831, it will show us a point on a graph paper. So that value will be 0. So it is the coordinates of that this point is what? 0 and value. So by writing 0 and value, so this will only put a steric on the plot. So now if I run this, so now we see that here is a steric on this graph and this is for this point, the coordinates are what? The, the coordinates are minus 0 0.5831 at x is equal to minus 0 0.5831. The function value is 0, right? And now if I change my guess, if I change my guess to let's suppose 3, the initial I change my initial guess to 3 and if I run this, so now we see that it gives us this point. So now nearer to 3, the f0 function tells us that at some value, at x is equal to 2.887, the function value is 0. So now uh, my recommendation will be that whenever you people use f0 function, so then first try to plot that function and have some initial good guess for f0 function. Now for this same function y is equal to x plus 2 e to the power minus x minus 3 if you want to find that minimum value and the x value for which the function minimizes. So if you want to find that minimum value of this particular function so then what we will do there is one another function in MATLAB which is also a function function and that function is f minimum bound f minimum b and d function. So we can use this f minimum b and d function if you want to find the minimum of a function in one variable. So then what we will do, we will the syntax for f minimum bound is this. So again it's a function function so then we will give another function as an input as a function handle. So this is the syntax for, syntax for f minimum bound. 
so we will write f minimum bound and this is the function handle and then we will give range for between which we want to find the minima so then again we will we will use some guess range so then if if we will use the guess value so then we need to plot the function so first we need to observe the graph of our function so now if i run this we have already plotted this so now we see that between 0 and 2 for x is equal to 0 and 2 between this range there is some minima value so now if you want to find that minima exact that minimum value between 0 and 2 so then we can use f minimum bound function so what i will do i will write here let me comment this now we do not want to find the zeros of function so now let's suppose i write inst uh, i write t or minimum minimum x and i write value right so now here if i want to show that uh, steric on this new graph so what i will do i will i will write minimum x the value of x for which the value will be the value of x for which the function value will be minimum so that will be stored in minimum of x and this will be that corresponding value right so now if i use this so i will write equals to f minimum bound and then i will i will provide the function handle so the same function handle so i will write y right so y and then i will write to be 0 and 2 between 0 and 2 i want to find the minimum so now if i run this so here we see that now the point on the graph is also shown here and this is the point this is that particular point for which the value of this function is minimum and what is that value of x so that value of x is 0 0.6931 right so now if if i change if i have given the range between let's suppose 1 and 2 if i change this range to 1 and 2 so now if we run this again so we see that the point changes and the minimum for this range between x is equal to 1 and 2 the minimum value of y is at x is equal to 1.001 right and if, if i increase the if i change the range to let's suppose 2 to 3 so now this time it will give us an answer of 2 somewhere near to 2 if i run this so now this is the minimum value so whenever you people use f minimum bound function you people have to provide the initial range so you need to observe a graph for that range so then you people will be able to locate the global minima otherwise it will give us it will give you people another name minimas another local minimas if we have a function which have some which have many minimas so in many minimas there is one global maxima minima so if you people want to find the global minima so then you people have to provide that exact range to find that exactly global minima